come up. All right, to tell you, uh, you know, a little bit about my life's journey, okay? I was born in 1942, December 23rd. I was a Christmas baby, and it's not a good time of the year to be born because the things they say about never getting Christmas presents or getting Christmas presents and birthday presents together. I mean, I was lucky if I got either one, but I don't ever remember having a birthday present. We had, we always had Christmas presents, but I, I didn't differentiate that those were supposed to be birthday presents too. I never attached a lot of importance to my birthday because usually there was so much else going on in our house at the time that we never even thought about it being my birthday. I never had a birthday party until I was 21 years old. And the day that my mother was having the birthday party for me, we had some friends who stopped by our house and we were talking and whatever with the friends. And they kept saying they wanted to go to, go to my mom's house. I said, oh, no, no, we'll go there a little later on, you know. <laughs> so here I was at my own birthday party because I, nothing could have been further from my mind as far as birthday parties were concerned. And um, it's just something that didn't happen for my birthday. And uh, so when we finally, you know, went to my mother's, we were late. I was late for my birthday party. And I was in total shock that anybody <laughs> would have a birthday party for me. Because again, I didn't attach any importance to it because well, the, it was Christmas. It was Christmas. Right. Kind of reminds me, I think it was your 70, was it your 75th birthday? 75th, yes. And we did the surprise party at Disney. Total shock. Yeah, we have that on video. Maybe I'll try and plug in a little yeah. something here to show that. it. We all came, came from all around the country. That was my second birthday party. <laughs> And again, I, I, everybody w would say subsequently to me, didn't you know, didn't you suspect? Didn't have a clue. <laughs> it just, it just, again, my birthday was never important because it's something that happened at Christmas time and whatever. And many times we, you know, we were, when I was a kid growing up, we were poor. I didn't get, get a lot of stuff, but we did get birthday presents, I mean, Christmas presents, and we did get, um, nice toys and whatever. Never had a bicycle. I never got a bicycle until I was an adult and my adult children bought me a bicycle. <laughs> so I had to learn to ride the bicycle then. And I'm sure there's some funny stories about that as well. But uh, that was my first bicycle when I was well into my adulthood, shall we say. So anyway, uh, I was born in Canton, Ohio, and, and as I say, in December. My mother was, was 16 years old when she married. My father was 19 years old. And uh, shortly after they married, 
my dad was drafted into the, I don't know if he was drafted or enlisted, I should say. He went into the military service and because the Second World War broke out. And so in the first year of my life, my dad wasn't there because um, he was in the, in the Navy. And my mother told, tells a story of when she went to visit my dad, he was in Norfolk, Virginia at the Navy uh, station there. And she went to visit him and has, has some time with him. And she tells a story about me on the, on the train, um, making up to all the sailors and playing with the, the sailor hats whatever okay as a baby i mean you know i i uh, like the concept of male there <laughs> so um, that was um we went to visit my dad and um nine months later my brother freddie was born um i think my my dad came home then shortly there he got he got um, he was hurt in the navy he was injured his back um and uh, I don't know what kind of a discharge he got, whether it was medical or just a general dis discharge. But at any rate, my, my dad came home. And um, throughout his life, my dad worked uh, with steel. We lived in Canton. It's part of the Rust Belt, uh, part of the steel industry. And that was my, what my dad always worked in. And there were times that he worked very well and made very good money. And there were times, a couple of times my dad got injured and wasn't able to work. And or there were economic hard times, there were layoffs and, and recession or whatever. I can't pinpoint the exact times and, and dates that those happened. I just know that there were periods when dad didn't work. And when dad didn't work, times were tough. And, um, but somehow they always managed to make a Christmas for us kids. Uh, we always had a lot to, uh, a lot of very good food to eat and feeding half of the kids in the neighborhood because they didn't have what we had, which, you know, and we uh, were poor, of course, but we didn't know that and we didn't care. So um, when the time came, I didn't go to kindergarten, but I was sent off to the first grade in St. Benedict's Catholic Church and a Catholic school. And um, the first teacher that I had was a sister Andrea, who was very a very young sister. And halfway through the school year, she died. Don't know what from or what happened or whatever, but I just remember that our young school, our young teacher died and um, didn't know why. But uh, I ended up going all eight years, of my primary school time, to St. Benedict's. And I had some good times there. I liked school and I did well, very well in school. But I would get into trouble for not paying attention. And um, I would be, when they were teaching subjects that I wasn't interested in or that I already knew, and I just didn't, didn't no longer interested me. Um, the uh, I would get my library books out, and be reading stories, be reading, and the, the uh, nuns, of course, didn't like the fact that I didn't pay attention, and uh, so they took my library privilege away from me, so I couldn't get any books. And uh, so then, being resourceful. <laughs> I started walking down to the walking to the public library, which was a couple miles away, and um, I would go there and get my, my book supplies. And I still had books to read in school when um, when I needed to. And then I got in trouble because the nuns found out that I somehow wasn't reading books that were age appropriate, shall we say. And the, they caught me reading a book one time called The Egyptian. And there were passages in the book where uh, she got in and warmed his bed up. And I thought, oh, she just warmed up the bed. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, 
I didn't have a clue as to what they were objecting to there. But at any rate, that's the way it was. Uh, my, mo my, uh, my mom and dad were both from very poor hum uh, beginnings. My mother's father died when she was 12. And uh, she was sent to an orphanage. She and her sisters, uh, Evelyn and Anna, were sent to an, an orphanage. And her little brothers, Bernard and Eugene, were sent to a place called Parmadale, which uh, they were babies, two and four. And their mother, were, I mean, she worked and she tried. There just weren't a lot of options for women in those days. And um, she would go to Cleveland to see the kids who were in orphanages. She would get to the place where the girls were, the bigger girl kids, and she'd be able to see them, but she didn't make it. She couldn't, didn't have the time, whatever, to go see the little boys. Those were very, very sad times. And the, the uh, children of that time who lost their father, every time that uh, was brought up, every time a child didn't do something right or fell short in one way or another, it was always said, well, it's because they didn't have a father. Their father wasn't there. <clears throat> and I didn't understand that at the time and didn't accept that, you know, but uh, that was how people thought and felt and did see the results of when children didn't have a strong home situation, how they suffered and how they were, were made to pay for um, shortcomings in society, I think. But at any rate, um, my mother throughout her adult life always made sure, first of all, that there was food in the house. I mean, I can remember loaves of bread stored under the bed. Um, she made sure that there was plenty of food in the house and that we had toys and things at Christmas time. And when we went to school each year, we always had a new dress to go to school in. We always had shoes, new shoes, and everything was, was good for us. Everything, you know, we went off to school looking well. And people I know in the neighborhood wondered how they did it, keeping all of us kids going. And I'm sure that after the first few days of school, yeah, there were times we went to look, school looking <clears throat> bedraggled and bestraggled, but uh, we always started out and that every attempt was made to keep us looking nice and clean and so on and so forth. Um, I don't know if you mentioned before, you, you started mentioning, you know, you were born and then next came, I think it was Freddie. Yes. How many children did your parents have? I had nine sisters and I had five brothers. So it was a total of 15. And um, I was the oldest. And uh, we were an Irish Catholic family. Um, and again, everything, my, my parents did everything they could to make sure that we were cared for that we had plenty of good food, um, and that um, we looked decent when we went out of the house, mm -hmm. okay? So, um, and I can remember people coming to my mother and dad and asking them if they could adopt one of us kids. They're, everybody, you know, they would see all, and the one thing about the, this is, and you see, the one thing that the Gallagher's did was made beautiful babies. Every one of my brothers and sisters were textbook beautiful. Mm -hmm. And uh, people saw that. And, you know, people who didn't have children would, would come and ask. <laughs> and my mom and dad said no. They kept us all together. And uh, that's how we grew up. So. And... Um, so that was getting through the, the early years. When we played games, 
Uh, there were a lot of things. We used to play a lot of cards. And you'll see that throughout our, our life. We would play different games of cards. And we, when we went outside, um, we would play um, cops and robbers or cowboys and Indians. And we used uh, to take, uh, we didn't have, you know, to make a, a toy gun, we would take two clothespins and put them together and hold them like this, and that was your gun. And um, we also, the, the soil around where we lived had a lot of clay in it. And we used to get some of that clay, but mostly dirt, I think it was. And we used to make things. We used to make pottery things uh, mm -hmm. out of the, you know, out of the clay. And of course, they never stayed or anything, but still, it was our creative side I, that we were able to, to do. And um, we lived in a, in a good-sized house. Uh, the house ha had two bedrooms and a dining room, which doubled as a, a bedroom as well. One bedroom was real big, and uh, and between that we had boys in one room and girls in the other room, and the bedrooms, and uh, usually the, uh, whoever the baby was was always in mom and dad's room, and uh, that was what we did, uh, and that's how we how we did, mm -hmm. and um, plenty of wonderful uh, times, summertime picnics. Our family went camping. Um, we there were places that they went camping that probably maybe wouldn't be very exciting, but they were exciting to us. We went to uh, a lake called Lake Pymatuning, and there we had some pictures of everybody getting cleaned up and whatever and sleeping. We slept in tents and did all of that thing. Okay, another thing that was very big for us. Uh, we used to make extra money in the summertime. We used to go berry picking, blackberry picking. And um, we would pick blackberries, big bowls of them, pans of them. And then we'd take the blackberries and we'd go around and sell them. So that way we would get extra money mm -hmm. that we could go to the movies or sometimes there was a circus we'd go to. I remember going to the circus whatever, but we earned the money to, to go to those things. At least I think we did. <laughs> I don't know whether we had enough, but we got it. Another thing we did was whenever we went someplace, there were always so many of us kids to go in that my mother, and my mother would have enough money to pay for a couple kids, to, to, but everybody would just run in. So they never <laughs> kept track of how many of us there were and how, um, whether or not we paid for everybody, I'm not sure. I don't think so. But anyway, that was how we did. And um, so there was a there, an old lady. Her name was Clara. And uh, she used to come and she had a car. And she had this old dog named Brownie. And she would come and take us berry picking. She took us places. And then I remember she took us places and my grandmother Woodburn took us places, took us to the movies. We would go, go to the movies uh, and we'd go to the first showing of the day in the morning or early afternoon, whatever it was, around noontime. And we'd sit there and watch the movie. Usually it was a double feature, cowboy westerns or whatever. We'd watch the movie and then we would come back on again and we'd watch it again. And my grandmother, usually by the time we saw it the second or third, third time, she wanted to leave. We didn't want to leave until the <laughs> end of the day. And we'd end up walking home in the dark, okay? Because she didn't have the, the heart to pull us out of the movie, which, you know, we should have done. But we, wouldn't do, we wanted to see that movie over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how many times I saw the movie I shot Jesse James, <laughs> or there was another favorite we had, it was Stars and Stripes Forever, the Clifton Webb movie with, uh, about John Philip Sousa. And that was appropriate because they always, in the summertime in Canton, there were free band concerts. And we would go and we'd listen to the march music and listen to various uh, um, popular music of that era. And we loved it. I learned mm -hmm. to appreciate a lot of different types of music, both march music and semi-classical and Broadway music. 
going to those band concerts. And uh, that, was, that was my grandmother's specialty. She took us to the band concerts and the movies. <laughs> so um, at any rate, that was, and, and then as I was growing up, you know, in school, uh, I wasn't really, there were, I had a circle of friends that were important to me three or four girlfriends and, and uh, we would walk to school together and walk home together and talk about our dreams and what we were going to do and what we were going to have when we got older and you know, we were going to have horses and we were going to do, which is something that was very important to me. And uh, I don't remember worrying about a job or what kind of profession I was going to do. It was always, I was either going to have horses or be queen of the jungle or something like <laughs> that. Like, those were my, my dreams. And um, so at any rate, that's what happened. Um, what are some things uh, that maybe you could connect with, you know, being brought up in a big family? There are some of your favorite things about yourself or your character or your personality. Well, if, if I wanted to do something, I always found a way to do things, do something, do accomplish something. I always knew there was a way. There's a certain amount of self-reliance and self-confidence. And two, I think as I was growing up, there were people who believed in me and who took the time to talk to me and tell me and encourage me. And I don't mean uh, overt encourage. I just just giving me the feeling that they wanted to know about me, and they they knew that I was alive, that I existed, and um, that I could do things, I could accomplish things. And they made me believe in myself. Some of the people who were like that was my grandmother. I told you about. You're I maternal or paternal? Maternal. Okay. Grandma Woodburn. I'll tell you about Grandma Gallagher later. But uh, Grandma Woodburn, Grandma Gallagher had conversations with me too, but they were different types of conversations. Um, that the lady, you know, Clara, Clara had been a friend of my great grandmother, my maternal great grandmother, my mother's mother's mother. And she, when they fell on hard times, she took my grandmother's mother and my grandmother in and help take care, you know, take, so they had a place to go um, when times were tough, okay? And um, then she took an interest in my mother and was always interested in that family and caring and doing things and whatever. And then interest in us, you know, mm -hmm. we kids. And then she, again, just all, just took us, it didn't take much. Mm -hmm. it just took us places and talked to us. Um, there were the, I had an uncle named Alex, who was my dad's sister's husband. For some reason, he always was interested, and he would talk to people. Well, what are you doing? What do you hope to do? Um, how is this, and how is that? And look how your mom and dad are doing, how well they're doing. And, and at times, we didn't think mom and dad were doing well. We didn't understand what a struggle they had just to meet ends meet. Mm -hmm. And again, in retrospect, when people began to look back and see what they did, how they were able to raise all of us kids, feed all of us kids. We had a house with one bathroom <laughs> and 10 girls, okay? Um, we had, um, and they still managed to go places, do things, they had, my dad and mom's family, they had almost every Saturday night, they had a card party. They played cards all night long, Saturday night, and then would go to church to mass on Sunday morning. And I don't know, many times my dad would be sitting in church on Sunday morning. And when the priest was giving his sermon, my dad would be falling asleep. And I mean, almost snoring, falling asleep. And I'd have to poke him to wake him up so that he didn't embarrass us by falling over because he'd been up all night the night before playing cards. So that they did that. And I told you about the camping trips and the, um, 
There were Sunday picnics. Another thing they used to love to do, which I loved, um, was they would load all of us kids in the car and we'd go for a drive in the country. And that's something that I did then and even enjoy doing now, is just getting off the roads and driving around the country and looking mm -hmm. at the scenery and looking at what's <laughs> happening. And um, I do that in my vlog sometimes. I'll just show scenery I, from places uh, that I go. And I feel like it gives context to your life and it does. just to see things. They would do that. And then we, they would conclude, They sometimes they would go and park the car up on a hill that overlooked a railroad switching yard where they had all the trains and they would move the trains by turning a train around from one track to another track. And, or, and uh, we would go and watch the trains. Or uh, many times we would, they would just go to a, a root beer place or an ice cream place and you'd get maybe a nickel ice cream cone and uh, or nickel root beer and that was your day out and, and it was great fun another thing they would sometimes go out for dinner on sunday to um, a place in barberton where they had chicken and the children's chicken dinners i think were either 25 cents or 50 cents i think there were 50 cents and that we'd have Chicken oh, I dinner. love their, I, I ate there the last time I went to Ohio and it, they cook, they fry the chicken in lard and it is just the best chicken you ever had in your life. Uh -huh. And I, I would argue it's better for you than, than eating chicken cooked in some of the other cheaper hydrogenated oils that are mm -hmm. on the market. So. Well, anyways, but my family has been going to that restaurant since before I was born. My mother and dad went there. And again, they would get they so many chicken dinners, children's chicken dinners, I'm sure <laughs> they didn't count right sometimes, but, uh, you know, 50 cents a, a chicken dinner. Yeah, and it makes it doable when you have a large group. Really? I know Jared and I have to get, you know, creative about when we do things with all the kids because when we're all together, there's seven of us. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, it can get expensive fast to mm -hmm. go out to eat. Right. So... So anyway, um, so that was what we did. Those, that was the entertainment. And uh, we did uh, Halloweening and uh, and that was another thing. We would go out for two or three days, three days in a row, Halloweening, and come home with big bags of candy. And that candy had to last us till Christmas time because it was <laughs> more candy. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, I would just go out on that that one night it wasn't done multiple nights yeah. in my town i know sure. some towns are like that though where they'll do it for days well but jared told we, me it was like that in pennsylvania yeah really yeah that's uh, in ohio it was like that too the kids mm -hmm. went out several days in a row yeah so we did that and um had some wonderful wonderful times but um i'm enjoying seeing the the photos on the scroll here mm -hmm. you know and i've seen pictures of you know your killed children mom my mm -hmm. mom julie and jimmy my uncle and aunt karen you mm -hmm. have three children so right. we'll in a future interview we'll go into more detail on some of this stuff but this is just a great background sure. we're doing a project here and a lot of people like to document their family tree in book form but this is just a different way to do it. We're working on the books too, right. but the videos are more accessible and you know, it, it's just a different concept. I like the idea of it. Right. I think this is fun. So thank you for, for joining us today and until next time, goodbye.